good evening and welcome to the Word on Wednesday. Happy Wednesday before Thanksgiving to you all. Um, let's go around the world for a moment. As we meet with our families uh, tomorrow for our happy gatherings in our happy homes and our safe homes, uh, many of our International Mission Board missionaries are in dark places, hostile places, volatile places where tensions are, are running very, very high. But into those dark places, they are going and they are making a difference. Uh, one of those places that our International Mission Board missionaries are going uh, is refugee camps. And they are going there. And as crazy as this may sound, Israel opened up its doors to Ukrainian refugees when the Russians invaded Ukraine and the Ukrainians had no place to go and many of them fled, Israel said, you can come to our place. And our International Mission Board missionaries are ministering to over 13,000 Ukrainians who were refugees in the country of Israel. And so every time you give an offering to this church, uh, whether you give online or you put your money in the box, um, part of that money uh, goes to support international uh, missionaries. Uh, we call it the IMB. And uh, so you're supporting the work of over 3,500 missionaries around the world. Well, let's go around the campus. Uh, celebrating the Savior uh, is December the 3rd, uh, 4 o'clock in the afternoon. All of our choirs will be coming together, and we'll be celebrating the birth of our Savior with song. It's going to be a great time. I hope you make plans to come. December the 3rd, uh, 4 o'clock. March to the Manger is December the 17th. That's the day uh, that we will give a special offering uh, for international uh, missions. Our, our uh, international mission offering is called the Lottie Moon Christmas offering, named after uh, a missionary who lived a long time ago but made an incredible uh, impact in the world of missions. Um, our Sunday morning announcements, you can get them on your phone. They come at 7.30, contains all the announcements uh, for the week and also uh, for the next couple of weeks. And so now on our announcements, you can see our Thanksgiving and Christmas office hours. They're a little bit different. And also on our website, you can see the dates for uh, Disciple Now, uh, Vacation Bible School, uh, as well as uh, Centra Kid Camps. All of those things are on our website now. And so take a look at that. Uh, be very informative for you. Now, uh, on another note, um, in a small Russian village, a young boy uh, was born. He had no idea uh, the turn of events that was going to happen in his life. He was raised by Christian parents uh, in a Christian home, often went to church uh, when he was young with his parents. And over the years, uh, the boy grew up and, and he watched communism slowly destroy Christian churches. In fact, many pastors were uh, imprisoned or even killed uh, because of what they were doing in their Christian churches, preaching the gospel. Now, this young boy grew up, became a man, started a family. His name is Dimitri. He had two sons, and uh, he realized that his sons were growing up not the way he did. He grew up with a rich environment of Christian heritage where the Bible, he knew the Bible and he heard the Bible read and he sung the songs. And so he decided that he was going to do something with his family. He would start reading the Bible to his family uh, and, and then they would also sing songs. And he would try his best to explain what the Bible meant. And his wife was really happy uh, that Dimitri was doing this. In fact, said that she had prayed and prayed that her husband would take the lead in his family and teaching spiritual things. So they started doing that as a family and singing some of the old songs that he used to sing uh, when he was going to church as a boy. And it wasn't long before the neighbors caught wind of what he was doing and, and came and joined as well. And so uh, they wanted to sing those songs. They wanted to study the Bible as well. 
And so it wasn't long before Dimitri's home was beginning to be uh, filled with worshipers. Uh, One night while they were meeting in their home, in Dimitri's home, a police officer came, threatened Dimitri with violence, told him what he would do to him if they didn't cease. He was accused of running an illegal church. And so Dimitri tried to explain that this was not a church. This was just a gathering of of neighbors, and that's what they were doing. Well, the number of worshipers continued to grow. And when the group got to be about 50 strong, Dimitri was fired from his job because of what he was doing. The number still continued to grow, reached 75. And the Russian authorities uh, interrupted the service one night and beat Dimitri. They warned him that if he did not stop, if he met again, that bad things were going to happen. And in that meeting, an old woman stepped out from the crowd and she said, you have touched the man of God and you will not survive. Sounded like an Old Testament prophecy that she made. Well, that was on a Tuesday night And the following Thursday, the man died. And so great fear swept across the community, the village there. The next time they met, 150 people gathered. Well, the police, the Russian authorities were absolutely outraged, and they arrested Dmitry. And they hauled him away to prison a prison that was filled with hardened criminals a thousand miles from his home. And Dimitri suffered regular beatings there in that prison. His jailers demanded that he renounce his Christian faith and and renounce Jesus and confess to being a spy. And he refused to do that. They even told him, they deceived him into thinking that his, his wife had been arrested. And this was a, often a trick of the jailers. Uh, they would trick prisoners into doing what they wanted them to do by telling them things that were not true, by telling them things like his wife's been arrested or even murdered. But for 17 years, Dimitri remained steadfast to the Lord. Early in the morning, he would stand in his cell He would face the east, and he would sing heartily to the Lord. The other inmates tried to shut him up. They couldn't stand it. They would shout at him. They would insult him. They would do all kind of things, throw human waste on him to get him to shut up, but he would not. He made it clear that he would neither deny Jesus nor sign a confession. And so at last, after 17 years, they drug him from his cell with the intent to kill him. And as they drug him away from his cell, the guards stopped dead in their tracks. Every inmate who had poured their hatred out on Dimitri for so many years now stood at the doors of their cells and sang the song that Dimitri would sing. So not only was he not executed, soon he was released and was able to go back home and be reunited with his family. There's a song that captures much of what I've just told you. I'm going to read the lyrics of this song to you. He says, the song begins by saying, My name is Dimitri. I was born a Russian man. I was a factory worker until 1960, and I started teaching the Bible to my two little boys, and that's where the journey began. Well, our house became a church, and the Sunday school grew, had 150 before we knew it, but the KGB didn't want God around. 17 years they locked me up a thousand miles away. And listen to this. This is my heart song, and I will stand and sing, for I am a son of the living king. So when the fire comes, 
I'll be rejoicing. Yeah, even when I suffer, I'll be singing, Jesus is alive. Despite 1,500 prisoners, criminal to the core, who would laugh and curse and bang their cups and try to drown me out, like clockwork every morning with the rising of the sun, I'd stand and raise my hands and sing my heart song to God. This is my heart song. I will stand and sing, for I am a son of the living King. So when the fire comes, I'll be rejoicing. Yeah, even when I suffer, I'll be singing. Jesus is alive. Believers stand for what you believe. Faint not in adversity. If you are cursed for Jesus' name, don't give up. No, don't give up. Well, they tried to break me, but I wouldn't give in. And as they dragged me out for my execution, I heard a choir of angels, murderers and thieves, those 1,500 criminals had risen up for me. They raised their hands and sang the song my father taught me. The sweetest sound I'd ever heard. I heard freedom ring. Oh, let it ring. This is my heart song. I will stand and sing for I am a son of the living king. So when the fire comes, I'll be rejoicing. Even when I suffer, I'll be singing, Jesus is alive. And so if you'll look in the comment section uh, of our Facebook post, you'll be able to click on a link there and listen uh, to this song. It's a great, great song. I encourage you uh, to listen to it. But let me, let me take you to the word just real quickly. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 gives us a very simple instruction And here's what the Bible says, verse 18, in everything, give thanks for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. You know, sometimes we, we say, you know, I I wish I just knew, I just wish somehow I just wish I knew what the will of God for my life is. Well, let me just tell you, this is a great place to start. Listen to what he says again, in everything, give thanks For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. This is the will of God for you, that in everything we would give thanks. Here's what the Bible is describing. The life of a believer should be marked with gratitude. I mean, it should be something that flows out of us just as naturally as breathing, just giving thanks in every season of our life. That means in the hard times and the times when it's not hard. It means in the happy times and the sad times, in everything, give thanks. We should be marked with gratitude. I'm so encouraged uh, by people like the story of Dimitri. You can read that story in the insanity of God. That's the title of a book, and it's an incredible book. And there he, he relates uh, Dimitri's story. But I'm encouraged by someone like him that even though he's going through very difficult times, he can stand and sing his heart song to the Lord in grateful appreciation for what God has done for him. He has saved him. He walks with him. He never leaves him. He never forsakes him. And the same is true for me. The same is true for you. We have so much to be thankful for. So our lives must be marked with gratitude. If we want to reach the people around us, they need to see a grateful servant of the Lord Jesus Christ when they meet us. Let me pray for us. Father in heaven, I want to thank you. Uh, for this moment. Lord, I thank you for this Thanksgiving season uh, on our calendar. And Lord, what a reminder it is for us for the simple things that you've told us to do, 
to be grateful in all things, that in everything we give thanks. And so, Lord, I pray that we would be this kind of people marked with gratitude in a world like ours. Lord, use us, we pray, in Jesus' name. Amen. Have a great rest of your day, and we'll see you soon.